scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. The man here is a rainmaker. He's a climate changer. God uses him to transform destinies. Oh, Jesus. Where I go start, where I go stop. My wife just held me and said, Hi, sweetie, we are blessed. Having my, it's very emotional. I'm writing a book called Mentorship, The Shortcut to Success. I'd finished it. When I encountered him, I had to pack the book at the side and begin to redefine fatherhood because he has redefined fatherhood to me. We have been taught that we should always keep giving to fathers, giving to fathers. I am shocked to meet a father that changed the narrative. When I sit with him, he holds me and says, I love you. Oh God. If you have never encountered Jesus, when you encounter this man, you will know who Jesus is. A practical revelation of Jesus in human flesh. When he says, I love you, it comes from the depth of his heart. I feel the warmth and he's serious about it. His heart pants for my greatness and for my increase. He told me three years ago, Pastor Ike, repackage the name of the ministry. I didn't catch it. Immediately I obeyed, the heavens opened. In his light, I see light. He shows me the possibilities that exist. See what God is doing here because I socketed my destiny to a man like this. I want to tell you, wherever you were before, after today, your dentistry is, is, oh God, where will I sit? It's exploding, it's exploding, it's exploding, it's exploding. Do you know who is here? Destiny on two legs. Wisdom on two legs. Grace on two legs. Climate changer. Anchor. Oh God, well, where will I start from? The apostle of our generation. A revivalist. A man that loves the church. A man that loves the people of God. A man paying the price for our destiny. Asaba, 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 Asaba. Are you ready? I'm not feeling your energy. I'm not feeling your energy. You're not behaving like somebody that wants to ascend a change. I want you to jump. I want you to shout with Jesus' joy, a jumping ovation, a shouting ovation, a loud voice, a loud expectation. Welcome, my father, Apostle Joshua Selman, as he comes to minister to us. glorified Jesus be glorified Jesus be glorified let's celebrate what God is doing amazing 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 hallelujah and I want you to please help me bless pastor Ike and his dear wife give him a big 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 if you were not in ministry I would have recommended you to do politics <laughs> 
Hallelujah. This man can speak. He would talk and talk and talk. And I was watching and I said, oh God. But we give Jesus the praise. Hallelujah. Please help me honor every man and every woman of God here. Give them a big, big God bless you. It takes a lot of humility and maturity for men of God to leave their busy schedules and to come to be part of this apostolic encounter. And I particularly want to honor my dear friend, um, Bishop Jude. God bless you. Such an honor. Thank you. Thank you so much. Amen. It is true that when God wants to lift men, he sends men. It is true that when God wants to redefine our possibilities, he will send men to our lives. Whether we are attentive to what the Spirit is saying and doing or not is a different ballgame. But I'm praying in the name of Jesus, hence you have come, that the grace to hear, the grace to listen, the grace to understand may be released upon you in the name of Jesus. Do you believe in prayer? Can we pray for a few minutes? Let your prayer tonight be a simple cry. Father, do in me whatever it would take to position me for the next level in the spirit. Go ahead and pray. Do in me everything. The pruning, the building, the transformation, illumination. Someone prays. Kabalako shapra tegebeleketas. Shadebeledekete branda gabalato sabrestebeleji. From the front to the back, the left to the right, connecting online, go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. The Bible says, for everyone that asketh, receive it. You are a man of God, pray. Businessman, pray. Anoint my everything, use my everything, I release my everything, you have my everything, take all of me, all of me Lord, you have my everything, take all of me, all of me Lord, you have my everything, are you praying? You have my everything. You have my everything. You have my everything. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Anoint my everything. Use my everything. I release my everything. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me. You have my everything. Use all of me, all of me. You have my everything. Prune my everything. Rebuild my everything. Remake my everything. Use my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. We're still praying. Just a minute to pray. Let it be a cry from your heart. You came for an encounter tonight.
Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, we pray that tonight you find the people ready to receive. We pray tonight that you will find the people yielded, ready to receive, ready to learn. We strip ourselves of every pride. We strip ourselves of every vain glory. And Father, we cry that tonight, let only one person be seen in this place. Jesus, even the Son of the living God. Let only one person be exalted in this place. Jesus, even the Son of the living God. Lord, we stand and we hide behind the cross. And we cry, O oh God, that as your people set their gaze upon this preacher, may they see Jesus. May they see Jesus in his power, in his wisdom, in his grace. And to you be all the glory. For in Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Please be seated. God bless you. And you may be seated. Yesterday, I didn't have um, the opportunity to follow um, Dr. Obwele's session. I wanted to just follow to hear what he was saying so that we just connect from there. But I was in Lagos, so I was able to pick a few things. I think later on, just try to go through it. And I was very, very touched by the perspectives that he brought yesterday and i just thought it was it was something that god had put in my heart and so when he began to talk about these things yesterday i was very touched and i thought to just build from there um because it's important that we understand god's emphasis in these last days please lend me your attention it is important very very important very important please bring two people that shout right now very loud under the anointing i just saw a cloud of his glory and for someone the lord is saying he's bringing you into a new prophetic season just help them please help them please whether you're an usher or not you just hold them this is a ministry of the spirit When God does these things, it is because he's responding to the hunger of his people. I want you to be sensitive as we teach. This is why you came. Ay, 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 ay. Glory be to God. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Ay, 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 ay. Glory be to God. Ay, 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 ay. Glory be to God. Ay, 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 ay. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You see, what happens when you are in the presence of God is that you are immersed in the cloud of his presence. And as you listen, it is more than an information that is coming to you. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. He says, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Then he says, we all. So it's an experience for everyone with faces unveiled beholding him as in a mirror he says we are changed changed we are changed this is what the bible says we are changed ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 1 he says son of man stand upon your feet and i will speak unto you and he had no strength to arise verse 2 says and the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me jesus was speaking and he says the words that i speak unto you it is beyond a lecture is beyond a man just speaking english 
when you come from the presence you also come with his presence and when you speak he says the words that i speak they are spirit and they are life that means beyond the things that the preacher is saying the essence of his communication from the depth of the spirit there is a spirit to spirit communication while you are listening to me there are things you will hear beyond what i am saying because it's not just your ears hearing it there is a spirit communication there is a spirit communication and so i want you to be very very attentive wherever we stop tonight we'll pray don't be distracted his word is powerful it comes to build us now god always has his emphasis in every season please listen god is not doing the same thing in all seasons and there are three levels of the anointing that is available in this side of god's kingdom the first dimension of the anointing is that which comes in the life of a believer by reason of being grafted into christ the bible calls it the anointing that is within hallelujah that is the anointing that is responsible for conformity the inner workings of the spirit that produces the character of the christ in the believer there is the second level of the anointing that comes upon a believer strengthening you to be a witness hallelujah it says tarry ye in jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high but there is a third level of the anointing that does not come just because you are a believer it does not just come just because you occupy an office it comes by reason of your understanding and aligning with what god is doing now so it is possible that you can be a man of god it is possible you can be a businessman and carry the anointing that is upon a believer by reason of our union with christ carry the anointing that is upon you by reason of your office and yet you will find out that you are very ineffective when you enter a certain season because of the inability to discern and align with what god is doing it says and of the sons of issachar there were men who had understanding of the times to know what israel ought to do so in every season god has his emphasis and there is a threefold emphasis please listen with all due respect if you're a man of god here i want you to hear me if you want to be relevant in the days that are coming your ministry must be pegged around these three things this is what god is doing now number one the first emphasis of the spirit is world evangelization this is what god is doing right now a campaign to see that as many as possible come into the experience of salvation he desires that all men be saved he desires that all men be saved that means whoever becomes part of this global missions this world evangelization campaign you can be sure that you have the backing the support of the spirit number two the second emphasis of the spirit in this season is the maturity of the saints the bible says an heir for as long as that heir is a child he differed not from a slave even though he be lord of all before now there is a lot of recycling of very inferior levels of light in the church so believers are not methodically mentored to attain stature and maturity in the spirit the average believer is very ignorant as far as the business of spiritual understanding and maturity is concerned so we are around church we do a lot of church activities but most believers are not sound in doctrine they are not grounded the average believer cannot stand in defense of his spiritual understanding what do you know about god what do you know about prayer what do you know about satan what do you know about victory what do you know about defeat what do you know about the realm of the spirit what do you know 
about God's program? What do you know about his economic system? What do you know about the cosmos? It is this understanding that gives you stature and a standing in life. So most believers, the average believer just has gaps of spiritual information, either learned from church or perhaps following a man of God or some teaching. So we have many disconnected truths that are not synergized to produce stability. One of the things that the Spirit of God is doing, He's rearranging our understanding. He's bringing us to a level of accuracy. There is a formula, and this is what I'm going to be teaching on. There is an apostolic model for the growth of the believer. The believer was never designed to grow by chance. The believer was not supposed to freelance your pathway to growth. There is a predefined pathway. Are we together? We produce doctors today because we invented predictable pathways. So anybody who subscribes to that pathway, at the end of six, seven years, you can call that person a medical doctor, an engineer. You imagine some of the people we celebrate today, once upon a time, they were naive people with only a passion to become what they are now. And their ability to have evolved was because they submitted themselves through a methodical system. Are we together? Most believers learn just by will, by passion. If you are fortunate to find it in a conference, happy for you. If you are fortunate to find it with your pastor, happy for you. If you are fortunate to find it in a book, happy for you. If you are fortunate to find it online, you stumble across a message and it seems to shed more light and take you out of a level of ignorance, happy for you. The church cannot be powerful that way. There has to be a defined pathway. And this is one of the things that I'll be showing us. So number one, world evangelization. Number two, the maturity of the saints. And to achieve this purpose, God is not really concerned about the saints. He's concerned about the ministerial gifts because they are the ones equipped to prepare the saints. Nobody will be able to raise a people higher than his realm of spiritual understanding. Are we together now? So rather than God seeking to raise a thousand people, he would rather walk upon that one person who he has made a shepherd over the thousand people because in his maturity will be their maturity. In his enlightenment will be their enlightenment. Everyone communicates truth from the lens of his ignorance or otherwise. Number three, what is the third emphasis of the spirit in this season? territorial transformation this is an aspect of the great commission that has been neglected for a very long time it is the reason why society has frowned at our christian experience because we've not been able to capture god to a context that has become profitable to society are we together the average christian's experience is laced with all kinds of fanatism without an experience that reflects god to society in Matthew chapter 5, when you begin to read from verse 13, Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. He says, and if the salt has lost its saltiness or its sever, wherewith shall it be salty again? It is good for nothing except to be thrown underfoot, trampled underfoot of men. Then he says, you are the light of the world. He calls us a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. It says, neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but that they put it on a candlestick and it gives light to everyone in the room. He leaves us with a mandate in verse 16. It says, permit your light to so shine before men, not before spirits. There is a dimension of your Christian experience that must reflect on society. So with all due respect, we have a lot of churches, a lot of conferences, a lot of conventions, a lot of crusades, and our society continues to plunge into a level of decadence, you see, because most believers have not been mentored to understand the principles of territorial transformation. The average believer only knows prayer as the tool for territorial transformation. And while that is important and foundational, that is not the only key. There are many aspects. Are we together? Yes. There are people in scripture that the Bible calls they which turned the world upside down. Their territories felt the impact of their godliness. So these are the three emphases of the spirit. World evangelization, 
the maturity of the saints god is opening redigging ancient wells again and bringing us to levels of superior understanding the things that we were once at a loss about the things that the fathers the things that the patriarchs knew that granted them access to power they manifested unusual possibilities god by his spirit through the spirit of revelation is bringing these experiences to the church again you believe that shout a loud amen. amen hallelujah so let's go to our discussion tonight there is an apostolic model for spiritual growth there is an apostolic model for wholesome growth and stability it's very important for us to understand there is a way God designed men to know him. And there is a way God designed men to function. Let me repeat myself again. There is a way God designed that men would know him. There are many ways, many routes in the spirit. As far as your determination to know God is concerned. But there is a predefined pathway. Please listen. The believer is not at liberty to invent his pathway to knowing God. The moment you attempt to invent your way of knowing God, you will dabble into witchcraft, spiritism, and all kinds of extra-biblical practices. There are many people who sincerely began a pursuit to knowing God, but they did not know that there is a predefined pathway. The many extra-biblical variations that we have in the body of Christ today are a, ref a reflection, it's a report card that if you do not follow the path designed by God, as far as knowing him is concerned, even if you are sincere, you will stumble across many, many, many things in the spirit that is not God. Are we together? The Bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the later time, some will depart from the faith and will give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons. If you understand anything about seduction, seduction has no power over you until there is a desire in you that it can connect with. Are we together? That means if I am not hungry, the temptation over food will have no power over me. So the character of seduction is that Satan studies your desire and builds a system of deception around your desire. So if your desire is to know God, you can go to fast, you can go to pray, but not understanding that there is a way God designed men to know him. You can sincerely begin that journey and find out that you are encountering familiar spirits, encountering all kinds of things. You will return back with all kinds of revelations that are not consistent with the character of Christ. And as you begin to practice those revelations, you will find out that you are becoming something else, not Christ. Are we learning now? So it is important for us to know that the believer is not at liberty to choose how to know God. <clears throat> there is already a path. Jeremiah 6, 16. Give it to us, please. The Bible says, Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old path. Where is the good way? He says, and walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls. There is a path already predefined, predefined by God. And tonight I want to show you that path in the name of Jesus Christ. When Jesus called the disciples who would later become apostles of the Lamb, he subjected them to a model, a template. There was a way he raised them. There was a way he made them to evolve from fishermen to apostles. They did not just become apostles just because they exhausted their time with Jesus, they were submitted methodically to a spiritual system. The early church from Acts chapter 2 began to evolve and grow until they had mighty men within the church community by following the same pathway. And I submit to you by the integrity of scripture that any person, any church, any environment, any territory that goes back to that apostolic template must become a people of power, must become a people of grace. If that is you, shout a loud amen. So number one, there is a way God designed men to know him. There is a way God designed men to function. 
the second thought that i want you to have tonight is that there is a model there is a template that the early church used in building believers there is a model there is a template that the early church used in building believers it would be such a risk for jesus to leave them to their creativity choose how to raise the people no they were given an exact blueprint and they used it to the latter and they raised mighty men out of sinners if this model is followed the truth is that it will turn anyone to an object of wonder the idea that god just decided to select a few people and manifest his glory and power in their life is not scriptural it is true that there are people by reason of the election of grace are we together have been apportioned certain superior dimensions in the spirit for the sake of god's program but i want you to know and this is the next point that the believer has a destiny in christ please follow my teaching carefully are we together if we're together say amen i need to know that everyone is following there is a destiny that the believer has in christ and i want to reveal it to you the believer's destiny in christ listen to me the end product of all that god is doing in and through you is glory the end product i need to tell you this when you begin to walk with god the end product what god has in mind by the time he begins to walk with any man is that his glory be manifested through that person are we together god's ultimate desire for every believer as far as your prophetic destiny is concerned is that eventually your life becomes a manifestation of the glory of god write that statement down that your life this is this is your creed this is the destination your faith adventure why the prayer why the fasting why the word study why going to church on sunday i'm revealing to you that behind every spiritual activity this is what god has at the back of his mind that my life and your life becomes in experience a manifestation of the glory of god say my life please shout it say my life must become a manifestation of the glory of god one more time say my life must become a manifestation of the glory of god you know what the glory of god is the word glory comes from the hebrew word kabod the greek is doxa it means the weightiness is an attempt to measure the value of a thing so when you talk about the glory of a thing you have to examine all the features that makes that thing expensive or makes that thing desirable are we together now yes if i hold your phone right now if you're using a latest phone and i say what is the glory of this phone you have to tell me all the features that make that phone expensive or makes it unique so when the bible says the believer should be the manifestation of the glory of god it means the believer becomes a script an explanation to how mighty god is are we together now men do not know god because they do not have the spirit of god in them so you become a living epistle that when you walk with god eventually you begin to become a kind of believer that becomes the most visible expression of all the multifaceted dimensions that make god god his favor his wisdom his power his grace all of these attributes of god begin to find expression through you and it will cause the nations to acknowledge him as lord this is the destiny of every believer if you do not understand this you cannot raise people if you do not understand this you will produce a weak people man of god behind the pulpits that you stand in every sunday every wednesday behind every conference such as this it's important for us to know that we are in partnership with god over this agenda to be able to bring the saints into their prophetic destiny that no matter where you meet them from you should never leave them that way god's desire is more than making you rich that's too small an agenda god's desire is more than just giving you a job 
is important but it's too small an agenda these things are called his benefits there are six of them according to psalm 102 bless the lord O oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name he says bless the lord O oh my soul and forget not his benefits but don't get so distracted with the benefits that you forget your destiny the destiny of every believer listen to me ladies and gentlemen whether you are a man of god whether you are in business this revelation changed my life as an individual and as a man of god behind my raising people by the spirit behind the things that i do at the back of my mind is that i am in partnership with god to produce this agenda that to birth the glory of god in the saints are we together very very important your prophetic destiny in christ the bible says in romans 8 and verse 18 it says for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us there is a glory to be revealed in us there is a glory to be revealed in us in fact the bible says um how does it put it now it says for our light afflictions which is but for a moment it walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory there is a weight of glory the manifestation of the power of god john 15 and verse 8 herein is my father glorified when you bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples john 15 16 you have not chosen me but i have chosen you it says and ordained you to go and bear fruit and that your fruit will remain galatians 1 24 profound sentence and they glorified god in me god can be glorified in a man god can be glorified through a man are we together now yes when jesus walked upon the earth he walked as a revelation of who god was and who god is the invisible god that we never saw that we did not know now had a material frame was revealed to us in the person jesus so all our suspicions and fears and doubts about god were clarified when jesus walked upon the earth he was a manifestation of the invisible god and just like jesus the saints have been given the mandate to follow in his steps that means we are to our world today a revelation of the invisible god the god they cannot see hallelujah are we learning now say my destiny in christ please shout it say my destiny in christ is to be a manifestation of the glory of god on earth this is profound it will change your life immediately you know that beyond being a doctor beyond being an engineer beyond being a preacher beyond being whatever career whatever it is a family person that ultimately bigger than all of those things all those desires are subsets of this my life must become a glory a revelation of the glory of god that means one day someone should look at your life and say god i fear you this is what you can make out of men one day someone should look at your life and say indeed i know that there is a god in heaven do you believe this the believer has a destiny in christ and the destiny is that your life becomes a manifestation of the glory of god the second thing that i want to tell you is that there is a pathway that leads to this expectation in as much as it is god's desire that we become visible manifestations of his glory there is a pathway that leads to that experience there is a pathway that leads to that experience my god there is a pathway that leads to that experience in john chapter 14 and verse 6 jesus made a very profound statement he now said i am the way everyone say the way i am the way not i have the way not i will show you the way he says i am the way and the truth and the life when you really understand that statement he was not talking about three different things he was talking about a pathway i am the way that leads you to truth reality and at the end of that journey 
you encounter life. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So there is a pathway that leads to that. And it's important that you understand this pathway. Let me have three gentlemen, please. Any three gentlemen, just come up. Let me use you for an example. Any ones at all in front, come. We have three? That's all right. My friend, you can go back, huh? Just these three gentlemen. Do we have one more? Okay. You stand here, you stand here, and you stand here. Just space yourselves. Watch this now. Where is our third person? Come. You be the starting point. You can go up. Let him stand where you are. I like to teach giving an illustration. Now everybody watch. Please turn, just face this way. Yes. Watch this. There are three levels. You need to understand this. Three major levels to the believer's experience. Number one. This, for instance, is a sinner who does not even know God. He's never met God. He just came for a conference like this. Or he came to your church as a man of God. But the destiny of that believer is to become like this person. If you do not understand the three phases that produces the glory of God out of a believer, you will keep teaching and teaching and teaching and people will never change. The first level is called salvation. Don't assume you understand what I'm saying. You just believe this. If you try to follow the path to the glory of God and you jump salvation, you will never get there. Hallelujah. As simple as this sounds, there are many, many believers. Give us 1 John chapter 5, please. 11 and 12. Salvation. So here is a gentleman who say perhaps came to church and then a great man of God after preaching made an altar call. This gentleman perhaps naive in the things of the spirit. Are we together now? But he made that call and he came. Jesus be my savior. Be my Lord. Now he just began the journey. Jesus is called the key to the kingdom. There is only one key to the kingdom. It's not a metallic object. It's not a principle. It's not a law. It's a person. Jesus. But when you get into the kingdom, then there are the keys of the kingdom. Are we together? There is only one key to the kingdom. Jesus said, I am the door. So this gentleman gets saved. Now watch what happens. The moment this gentleman gets saved, for many believers, they think that is all. The average believer thinks his destiny is just to be saved. No, being saved is only entrance into the kingdom experience. Are we together? It was never supposed to stop at the initial salvation experience. Because at this point, there's a lot that is not yet at work in his life. So, when this gentleman gets saved, watch this. He does not just stay in that state. A transition begins. The second phase after salvation is called transformation. Transformation. You need to know this for yourself and then to be able to produce a qualitative believer within your territory it's unfortunate that many times we leave many believers barely saved i hope you know that every sinner according to scripture is called a harvest so in the mind of god every sinner is already ripe for a harvest what do you do when you harvest crops do you leave them in the farm there when you harvest a tomato, especially perishables, if you harvest tomato and leaves it in the farm, what begins to happen? This is what happens. So when you have a church full of people that are just saved and are not changed, they will fill the church and eventually all kinds of troubles, manifestations of carnality begins to happen because they are only saved. Transformation has not happened. Transformation is the name given to the process that makes you become like Christ in experience. Transformation, the name given to the process that makes you become like Christ in experience. Is someone following? This is very important. You may have heard me say the greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation. Every time you see an unbeliever around Asaba, 
every time you see an unbeliever around your area no matter what you give the person whether it's pocket money whether it's a job from an eternal perspective the greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation are we together so if you give that person a job if that person receives a healing miracle if that person receives lifting all of those things are just um they are just consolations but you have really helped an unbeliever when you bring him to a point of accepting the lordship of jesus now the greatest need of a believer that is saved is transformation are we together now transformation 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 the process that makes you to become like christ in experience galatians chapter 4 and verse 19 please give it to us i need to walk you through this path my little children paul says of whom i travel in birth again until christ be formed in you he's speaking to believers people who are already saved but he's saying there is a formation of christ that needs to happen the inner workings of the spirit this is what produces the fruit of the spirit like you heard dr ogweli was saying yesterday the fruit of the spirit is not something that is mechanical you don't try to have it a fruit is a natural byproduct of the maturity of a tree are we together when a tree grows well and it becomes matured it does not struggle to produce fruit transformation and conformity so this gentleman came to church but he came from a background of idolatry with all kinds of lusts and all kinds of anger all kinds of jealousy all kinds of things but he saved truly he gave his life to Christ and then through the ministry of the teaching priest according to Jeremiah 3 15 and I will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart and they will feed you he says with knowledge and with understanding this is the raw material that turns this naive believer into a transformed believer knowledge and understanding the bridge between immaturity and to become a person of stature is knowledge understanding is someone learning now so with time this our brother who started as a naive unbeliever full of all kinds of baggages there is the work of the spirit every sunday every wednesday every message every prayer session every fasting session every discipleship session is transiting this gentleman gradually eventually he will become what we call a transformed believer a transformed believer what is the difference between this man and this man there is a greater experience of the character of christ when you look at this gentleman there is a striking difference you will almost not know again whether he's Igbo or yoruba or hausa or e european or american do you know why because the limitations connected to his territory by reason of natural different descent has been eroded he's been brought into a new culture the only person he looks like now is Christ. The limitations that came with where he's coming from, the anger problems, the whatever it is, has been cut away. The old man has been deadened. He's been alive unto Christ. Are we learning? But you see, when this gentleman gets here, now he's learned the rudiments of the things of God. Then God lets him know, that I have an assignment for you and that this assignment is not just for you to be a church member this assignment is for you to be a witness now that you have experienced me you need to help the world know who I am because your destiny is to be a manifestation of my glory but for that to happen if you only go with stories they will drive you away and so you move to the next level called empowerment are you seeing the order now so salvation then transformation if you try to do an empowerment for this man you are only going to waste anointing and waste time and this is a mistake that is made in church people receiving gifts without the character of christ and you see all the kinds of trouble that keep coming out of this because we compromise on the pathway 
Look at the ratio of impartation to transformation. Three and a half years to one day of Pentecost. The, the disciples kept crying and said, Jesus, won't the anointing come on us? We want to work signs and wonders. And he said, no, stay. I'm making you to become a certain kind of people. They were only anointing conscious. They wanted anointing. When they saw Jesus healing the sick, they said, what manner of man is this? That the winds and the waves obey him. Give us this power too. And he said, no, not that way. You continue. At a point, they became angry. They said, listen, we've left everything to follow you. This bargain is not, we thought you would just give us anointing. And that mistake still happens in church today. There are people who the moment they get, they get saved. They run around with bottles of oil. They run around harassing men, holding their trousers. I will not let you go. You need to understand that the value of empowerment is when it comes upon a transformed vessel. Because the oil will always assume the shape of the vessel carrying it. When the vessel was small, it made the oil look small. What was multiplied was not really the oil. The moment the, the vessel expanded, the full potential of the oil was revealed. So there are some of you right now, God is doing a work. You are in this phase of your Christian experience. And while that is happening, the devil is deceiving you that the anointing will never come upon your life. You are what kind of man of God are you? By now you should have opened a church. By now you would have become a great man of God. No. The level of stamina it takes to represent God will be gotten in this your phase of transformation but then when you are truly transformed the next phase is empowerment empowerment when jesus walked with the disciples they got to a point where he told them now you've understood the message you need empowerment tarry in jerusalem don't just carry stories around you need to be able to be validators to be witnesses are we learning now any believer who follows these three phases will eventually become a mighty manifestation of the power of God. But the most important aspect, notice, this one, salvation happens instantly. Are we learning? Empowerment happens instantly. The one that is not instant is transformation. And that is the hardest of the process. Let me take it again salvation happens instantly you declare the lordship of jesus in that moment whether you feel like it or not you are saved when the power of god came upon elisha in that moment he began to work miracles but ladies and gentlemen the hardest journey of the believer is the journey from salvation to complete his process of transformation in truth we don't finish but that you attain a threshold that can leave you empowered. Let me tell you what is happening in church. We are shifting this equation and changing it. There are some, hold my hands my friend. This is empowerment. Some of us, this is the equation we arranged. So people who do not even know Jesus. Just because there is an impartation. I want power. I want anointing. To what end? The men in Athens were bowing down and worshipping an unknown God. Is that in your Bible? An unknown God. They were worshipping an unknown God. And when Paul came, he saw them, he said, Ah, I perceive that you people have a lot of zeal. But all this worship and this service and this devotion, do you know the God that you are serving? Jesus told the woman at the well, he said, Ye worship what ye know not of. But we worship what we know for salvation is of the Jews. Tonight for someone, God is rearranging it. That just because the anointing has not come on your life does not mean you are following the wrong path. You don't start with transformation. No. You start with salvation. There are many people who have jumped that step. They started with transformation. They have never truly been saved but they've been around a church listening to a man of god and so they have a semblance of decorum in their lives and you will be mistaken that they are saved they are not saved the bible says for god so loved the world john 3 16 it says that he gave his then one and only begotten son that whosoever that blessing is for whosoever 
believes in him not whosoever comes around him whosoever believeth on him should not perish he says but have life everlasting verse 17 says for god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved first john chapter 5 let's read 11 and 12 first john chapter 5 please give it to us and this is the record asaba are we together that god had given us eternal life and this life is so structured that you must encounter his son verse 12 it says so that he that had the son is the only one who had life and he that had not the son does not have his life remember what i'm teaching you that the believer's destiny is to be a manifestation of the glory of god and that to achieve that there are three major phases watch this the first phase is when you acknowledge the lordship of christ the gift that you receive here is the righteousness of god you do not earn it it is something that comes as a gift the life of god as a gift watch this we are not saved by good works we are saved by grace but we are saved unto good works you see that now there is nobody who can end salvation for our righteousness is as filthy rags it is important that as we help believers we do not just start telling them oh you you don't pray and fast to be saved you don't study the bible to be saved no you believe in jesus to be saved when you are now saved there are many things that happen to you when you are saved that were not in you when you are not saved for instance the anointing that is within that comes by the spirit that is the anointing that makes you alive desiring you desiring god placing the love of jesus in your heart now that you have that measure of grace are, are you seeing that now the teaching priest in partnership with the word of god now leads you to a point of salvation of transformation you now begin to submit yourself to transformation and as you are transformed eventually you will find out that you are becoming a certain kind of mysterious believer and then a moment will come you will encounter the power of the holy ghost at that point you have become a living epistle god can show you to your world and you become a sign and a wonder and men look at you and marvel and say what kind of preacher are you what kind of businessman are you and if the person is interested you can pass the person through the same phase are you seeing that it's not an exclusive reserve for some preachers everyone who passes through this phase salvation transformation empowerment salvation transformation empowerment that is the apostolic model that was used by jesus to train the disciples and that was the model that they used to raise mighty men from the early church salvation transformation empowerment the greatest need of an unbeliever ladies and gentlemen every unbeliever in asaba no matter what you do to them if you do not bring them to the saving knowledge of jesus you really did not help them the greatest need of a saved believer is not to remain a baby but by the ministry of the teaching priest by the ministry of the word by the ministry of the spirit in partnership with all the spiritual exercises of fellowship and prayer according to acts chapter 2 and verse 42 and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and in fellowship in breaking of bread and in prayer that was the model acts chapter 6 and verse 4 but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word now that person is sub submits to this process of transformation and then when you are transformed you can now begin to experience measures of god's power and even that empowerment does not just come it is not all the anointing you need in your life that comes at once it comes in measures according to ezekiel 47 it comes in measures and that measure is controlled by number one the predeterminate counsel of god number two your level of faithfulness in using that which he has given you and number three your yieldedness to receive more these are the factors that govern the multiplication of the anointing hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son 
Attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.